Take us through the thought process of um, exiting and re-entering civilian life. Ooh, <laughs> oh man, that's a, that's a, that is a question in itself. There are so many different interactions that, that I've had with, with the other veterans, hearing about their experience. I have a lot of friends who, who left the military when I left the military. I have friends who left the military as I was getting in, and I have a, I've had friends who are leaving the military now, now that I've been out, and I've been able to kind of act as a, as a listening board for them when they're going through tough times. We all have different issues, whether it's getting out of the military and thinking there's nothing wrong, getting out of the military and there actually being something wrong and us trying to, to act like nothing's wrong, right. or getting out of the military trying and to fix what's just wrong. trying to fix what's wrong right, right off the bat. Right. That's, a, uh, that's, a up, that's an uphill journey, man. That's a, it's a big one. But with, but with movies and like society and even social media, like I feel like the awareness for um, mental health for people coming out of the military has been heightened. Yes. Do you agree? I uh, completely agree. So, and, and, and I think just, uh, people are just more now paying attention to it because mm. the whole United States suffer from PTSD, you know what I'm saying, just growing up here. Yes. But the military, that's been going on for years, so mm. PTSD been real since the beginning. Yes, brother, 100%. They just They're just becoming more of aware publicly, you know. You, you're absolutely right about that. And there's a movie that I want to just give a shout-out to because I think it perfectly articulates what you just spoke about, the movie Merging Veterans and Players. So... Nate Boyer, um, he, he, put together, he put this movie together, and I, I really, really admire it. It spotlights the transition out of the military and how it's different for other people. Some people, it could be you know, simple things. Like you have, you have a difficult time being in large crowds. Loud noises. Loud noises. And, like that, yeah. and those things might seem in your mind like they're, they're very small. Mm -hmm. Those are huge things. I've heard stories, like crazy stories. I'm like, and like you said, I'm looking at them like, yeah, right. And they're like, no, but for real. Like For real. Yeah. I was like, damn. Like I don't I don't like me personally, I don't like sitting with my with my back to doors. It makes me a little nervous. Um, just because of my life experiences. I don't like hear, hearing uh hearing fireworks. It makes me want immediately ask, is that a firework or a gunshot? Um, being around people who are irresponsible with guns is a is a really big problem with me because I don't like I don't like where gun irresponsibility shows up. It's it's nothing positive that follows. There's a lot of different things that I can articulate about for me, but merging veterans with players, that movie really spotlights the different issues that we that we might face. A lot of them stem from our childhood. What what issues you face in the military and transitioning out might all stem from your childhood, and that's something a lot of clinical psychiatrists are dialing in. Right. Uh, and for a lot of you know, the, I'm I'm a part of a peer to peer support group, which is super helpful for me. I was um, just gonna ask you do therapy. I was just gonna ask you. Yeah, I I do I do a form of therapy. Um, I've never been one to, to benefit from sitting in a room and, and just talking back and forth with someone who's being paid to listen and tell me what I needed to hear. Um, what's very helpful is peer-to-peer -peer support. It's I was just going to say maybe somebody with military background. You, you just Because that was my yeah. thing. Like I don't want to go to therapy if, if I have to sit. No offense to the other coaches, but I don't want to talk to a, usually an older white lady mm -hmm. about my problems <laughs> and what it means to be black in America. Like If I get a black dude... No homo, you know what I'm saying? Like to be able to, you know what I mean? Empathize and, and really relate right. with me, lock in with me about what it means to be. That's a whole nother problem trying to yeah. get you to understand what I'm even trying exactly. to talk, talk yes. about. You know what I mean? We ain't even getting to the problem. We yeah. got to understand where we at first, you know? But it's good to, it's good to communicate <clears throat> with somebody that has a, a IQ level of, of common ground. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just to have a conversation with them can help you share different perspectives on what you think your perspective should be. Yeah, so and, and that's just it. They have the the foundation. So I, I can I can definitely relate to what you say, man. I I find a lot of solace in talking to a guy. He might be in the army. He might have got blown up three times, right. but me hearing his his journey, right. I can find similarities about issues that I have. And I wouldn't say them. I wouldn't call them necessarily issues. Things I'm working on. Things I'm working on. I'm working on being more receptive to to confrontation. I'm working on not going over the top and thinking someone's trying to kill me when they're just trying to fight me. Because they got some own, they are chip on their shoulder, whatever. It's not. It, not every situation needs to be taken to the extreme. And there's a lot of different times where I have taken things to the extreme, and I and I, I look back on it with wishing I could do differently. But uh, work when you work on yourself with a group, you can all grow together. And you, you don't want to just go through shit in life. You want to grow through it as well. So having that army veteran who 
you know, Jason Jarman or Sean Stokes, having uh, freaking my boy Cody, to, to, to sit down in a group and talk with them and say, man, it really sucked when my buddy committed suicide last week on Memorial Day weekend. That, 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 that I think I've lost more people with suicide personally than I mm. have, definitely way more than I have in the military. And, yeah. and that's a big issue. How, we, how are we as a country, how are we as a society dealing with mental health? Um, it's a big issue. And I think we can all agree sitting here that I don't want to sound like that, that men are the victims in this situation, but men have had often mental health has been overlooked. It's not, it's been, oh. a, it's been a thing. Yeah. And I, and I can get when people talk you about. You consider soft if you yeah. even try to talk about it in any way. So yeah. Suck it up or, you know, whatever. Men don't cry. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like a knee action, re a joke. You're like, come on, yeah. man. You know, you don't even really mean to do that, but like that's how everybody is already conditioned to do it. Society's yeah. standards. Exactly. Yeah. And they're, and they're shooting, our, shooting us in the foot. When we look at it as, okay, man, man, I'm really, what's going on? Are you good, bro? Nah, man, I got some shit going on. Okay, well, you want to talk about it later? Mm. Yeah, let's talk about it later. When, as soon as you lead that group, you can, you can lean on your brother, right? Being a brother's keeper doesn't necessarily mean just holding his peace after he drops somebody. Being a brother's keeper doesn't mean going to blows for, for your friend in a bar fight when he was actually the asshole who started it, you know? Um, right. Being your brother's keeper could be saying, hey, bro, you might have had too much to drink. Let's not drive. Let's not be a fucking idiot. Right. I think it's great that we have that happening, and I'm, I'm seeing examples of it every day. When you're a brother's keeper and you look out for your a friend who's in a in military uniform, when they take that off, one of the main issues that they're, I'm usually seeing that they're facing is identity issues. I knew who I was when I wore the uniform. What happens when I take it off? And the NFL, the NFL players have a similar thing as well. Um, and that's what I like about this, this MVP group. So after you leave the NFL, you were this athlete. You, were exa you knew who you, you had a calling. You had purpose. And purpose is a driver for males in general.